For the better part of seven months, I've had a Google Home Mini here in my room, and it's been used to control my smart lights, it's been used to set alarms, it's been used to find out the news. I've really thoroughly enjoyed and really, really used this a lot in the time frame that I have owned it. And then, about a week ago, I came across an exceptionally good deal on the Google Home Hub. You know, the Google Home with a display on it. And I bought one. So let's talk about it. All right, so up close and personal with the screen here, you can see this is how the display on it looks as you're looking around the device. If we rotate around towards the back, you will notice that there are two toggles on this device. The toggle up here at the top, this one here, that turns off the microphone inside of the Google Home here. So if you turn that back on, if you say, hey, now, well, the microphone is off, hey, nothing happens. A little indicator light will pop up right up there at the top, and it'll let you know that the current situation that you're in doesn't allow you to speak to it. As soon as you switch the that toggle, it'll come back up. Also on the back, you'll find a volume up and down rocker, which is really nice. I like having a physical rocker, though I also find myself most of the time being, hey Google, set the volume to 50%. And it'll just set it to 50%. All right, so here we are looking at the Google Home Hub. It's basically a tablet mounted to a smart speaker. And for the most part, I've really enjoyed owning this over the course of the week. Towards the end of the video, once we've kind of done the comprehensive review, I'll talk about whether or not the price was actually worth it. But for now, I'm going to cover a few of the features that you get with this that you don't get with the $29 to $50 Google Home Mini. For example, obviously you get a display and you can configure this display to do different things. I have chosen to make it a photo reel so I can see different pictures from different things that I have done displayed right here. It's basically, I back all the photos on my iPhone up to Google Photo and those are the photos that I see when I walk in my room and it'll display all kinds of different things that I've done and it's really cool. Sometimes I'll get pictures that I forgot I took and it's really neat to have those resurface a couple months later and you'll walk by and be like, I remember doing that, that was pretty cool. In terms of the display functionality, that's about where it stops for me. However, there are some other advantages to this. I just haven't used it as much as I thought I would, which is kind of unfortunate. If you swipe down from the top, you have the ability to control various things on your device just by tapping on them. So the lighting in the room, for example, you can actually pull up the lights in the room and control them and their color by lights. Just tapping on them, you can see what lights are on, what percentage the lights are set to. You can turn every single light in the room on or off with the tap of a button. So if you just tap this button, uh, right there, you can turn the lights on or off. So we'll turn all the lights off real quick and you'll see everything dims out and all the lights are off at this point in the room. Or I can turn all of the lights back on again with just the tap of a button. It's really easy. I can go into the lights themselves and choose from a wide variety of predetermined colors that you can make every single light in the room. You can also do this by voice, but here it's really easy. You can just tap on them, or you can go into each individual light. And for example, I have a light here shaped like the Apple logo. I can toggle that light individually just with the tap of that button. So it's kind of convenient. It's really nice. This would also be a good spot to interject that review and mention the fact that if you have a Nest thermostat, you can control the temperature just by tapping and doing a similar wheel pattern to what I did with the lights. It's also a good opportunity to mention that if you have a Nest doorbell, and you have someone ring the doorbell, it will automatically take over the display and show you who's at the door. 
I don't have that. I have the ring doorbell and for whatever reason the ring doorbell is not compatible. So it ruins that functionality for me. But hey, if you have the Nest doorbell and not the ring, you can see who's at the door. If you have the ring, it does not work, or at least I haven't made it work yet. Wiping up from the bottom of the display brings up some other toggles, one of which being the ability to set an alarm. Though I have not ever set an alarm this way, it's far simpler to go, Google, wake me up at 7 a.m. Tomorrow at 7 a.m. Set. And just like that, and just like the previous versions that I've had of the Google Home Assistant, it does it perfectly well just using your voice, though the display confirmation is nice. And then if you leave here, uh, you'll see it'll go into a darker mode for nighttime use, which is wonderful. I can also tap to get back to this at any time, but as soon as you set an alarm, it'll put you into that night mode. So if all the lights are off in the room, it actually dims down and becomes dark and it's not displaying out tons of ambient light. I do appreciate that. If you swipe over from the right, swiping right to left, you'll see events coming up on your calendar and other things that it recommends, various news stories, one thing you can do with this that you cannot do with other Googles is hop in here and see various videos that it recommends that you watch. For example, this one popped up. I can watch this YouTube video right here on the display as opposed to casting to a Chromecast or having to watch it elsewhere. It's kind of convenient. If you're done with it, you can just swipe up like you would in a multitasking situation. So it, it is nice. There's definitely some features that you can get really well. Some things show nicely. So if I want to see the weather for tomorrow, I can just tap on the weather. Bayonet point tomorrow, there'll be scattered thunderstorms with a high of 89 and a low of 74. Another thing that I have noticed that this will do is down here at the bottom after a period of time, it will come up with similar questions that you may want to ask and you can just tap on those. I haven't found myself doing that very often, but I have done it from time to time. Back to this guy that I had for several months. While I owned this, I absolutely loved it. And I say while I owned as if I don't have it anymore. I've just moved it to a different room. Uh, but basically, in the time that I had this and the things that I did with this, never once did I actually need a screen to do it. Even now, I do not interact with the touch screen on the Google Home Hub all that often. I really use the voice control 99% of the time. This retails for around $30. It's 30 bucks most of the time. Its actual retail price is like 50 bucks. So between 30 to 50 bucks, but most of the time this runs around $30 and you can usually find it online for about 30 bucks. So we'll call this $30 and we'll call the other one around $100, what we're talking about here, the Google Home Hub. I picked up the Google Home Hub for about $70, which was not that bad. That was not a bad price to pay for the Home Hub. And I appreciate the Home Hub. I do enjoy having it, but I can't recommend it really. If I'm being completely honest with you, it is not money well spent. It looks cool. I enjoy using it as a photo frame. I, I can't say much more than that in terms of having the screen on it. I think this is absolutely worth the money. At $30, if you're trying to turn a room into a smart room, you're gonna love it. This is phenomenal. The other one, I just don't see the added benefit of paying the extra money to get a screen. You're probably not gonna find it at the price that I found it for, and it's it's just tough to recommend it to you because I, I don't use the screen that much. I use it occasionally. It is nice when it's reading the news. This one reads you news. The other one shows you the news so you can actually see clips of the news and everything. It's just the added benefits are very small, especially if you have 
other devices that you're getting that information from. So you can also get the weather and everything on your iPad or your iPhone. It's just, it's an awkward product. It makes sense. It sounds good on paper. It really does sound good on paper. It's just, eh, once you bring it home, I think. That's my opinion. You may love it. You may hate it. I personally cannot recommend that you buy a $100 display that's added to a $30 speaker. You're paying $70 for a touchscreen. Everything you need out of the Google Home you can do with the $30 one. So in terms of which Google you should buy, get this one. It's perfectly fine. It does everything you need it to do for 30 bucks. If you run into a really good deal on that and you really, really want the screen or watching YouTube or Netflix on a table mounted device sounds good to you, get it. I'm not going to tell you not to, but uh, personally, if anybody ever asks me if they should get a Google Home, I'm going to tell them to get this one, not that one. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.